Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining me. Illinois. Oh my God. When you guys decide to take Second Amendment rights, you don't waste a lot of time, do you? No, it is a pretty instantaneous action. And as we know, Dateline, January 10th of this year, Governor J.B. Pritzker signed into law which went into effect immediately, the assault weapon ban of 2023 in the state of Illinois, not only banning assault weapons, but as well as most standard capacity magazines. Well, that's already had a lot of fallout for lots of reasons, but one of the big areas where the fallout is coming from for the governor is in the law enforcement community. And I think we have to pay very careful attention to what people in this community have to say. So for all of those of you lawful and responsible gun owners in Illinois, for all of those folks in Illinois that are just kind of sitting on the fence, don't really know what to think about this issue, and for all of those of you in Illinois who actually thought this was a piece of good legislation, then I suggest we all take a few moments, slow down, and let's talk for a minute about when all the sheriffs turn on your governor over gun control. Okay, so the issue we're talking about today is Illinois House Bill 5471, better known as the Assault Weapon Ban of 2023, signed into legislation by Governor J.B. Pritzker, January 10th, 2023, and effective immediately. So you had such a huge emergency needing to ban these magazines and weapons that we needed to act in, in immediately through an emergency piece of legislation. Now, uh, Illinois, I will tell you that your governor is a piece of work. I thought my governor was a piece of work. I thought my governor was an ignorant imbecile. In fact, he is. Your governor is a fat ignorant imbecile. That will be the one political statement that I will make today. However, this piece of legislation, which shockingly, Illinois, I read this bill and the language that is in House Bill 5471 is exactly, and I do mean cut and pasted from Washington's Six previous attempts at an assault weapon ban. We also have a seventh attempt going on right now. And shockingly, House Bill 1178 in Washington reads exactly the same in that particular section. Now, this was a large, large convoluted word salad piece of legislation where you had to get down to about a page 80 something, 90 something before we even got into what is now the assault weapon ban. This piece of legislation does it just like all the other pieces of legislation I've seen around the country. There is no such thing as an assault weapon. So what your state legislature does is it makes one up. It creates a new term in the statutory definitional section for assault weapon. It then encapsulates thousands and thousands of firearms into that by either naming them by make and model or just listing a few components that are very common across various platforms such as the AR and AK platform, listing them all now as unlawful assault weapons, of course, then to be banned by the subsequent legislation in the same bill. That's exactly what's happened here. So for those of you who are at home right now that are crapping yourselves because I'm using the term assault weapon, I am using the term that is in the legislation, okay? This is not my preferred nomenclature. I get that, but I am teaching people about the law. So I have a tendency to use the language that is shockingly in the law. Now, listen, this bill not only bans the sale, offer for sale and manufacturing of all assault weapons and high capacity magazines. But here's the other thing. It does grandfather these some of these firearms in for people who owned them at the time of the enactment of the law. However, you only get to own them if you register them with your government. And then the areas in which you can use these firearms are basically uh, your home, the gun range, and you can transport it locked up in a case surrounded by barbed wire with a timer on it uh, going in between those two locations. And remember, those firearms all have to be registered with your state, local po your state or local police. So apparently these firearms are so dangerous that government needs to know about those particular ones. Now, here's the big fallout. There's a couple big things. Number one, in addition to this piece of legislation, being absolutely unconstitutional in violation of the Second Amendment. And for those of you in Illinois, if you aren't aware of the common use test, and that does not come from the Bruin opinion, that comes from District of Columbia v. Heller. We have done a video on this right here. For those of you in Illinois or any other state dealing with these assault weapon bans, trust me, you need to familiarize yourself with the common use test. That is what's going to save the day for you ultimately. But because this legislation means that all of the FFLs, 
who with the stroke of a pen are sitting on thousands and thousands of dollars of inventory, which they can no longer sell unless there is a way for the FFLs to lawfully transfer these out of state or sell these things, what we have here is an unconstitutional takings as well. Government has now rendered that property useless, valueless, but has not compensated the FFLs for that. So there are, in all likelihood, multiple constitutional deficiencies with this horrible piece of legislation. But, and this is the important point, there now is over 80 county sheriffs throughout the entire state of Illinois that have written an open letter to their citizens essentially saying, Governor Pritzker, this law is unconstitutional and we're not going to enforce it. And in fact, right now, it would be easier for me to list the counties who haven't signed this letter. But just to give you an example, Adams County, for example, did it by proclamation. And Williamson County, not only did the sheriff sign a letter, but so did the state attorney. Perry County, McDonough, Ogle, Lee, Winnebago, LaSalle, Knox, uh, Joe Davies, Logan, Wabash, Edwards, Richland, uh, Gundy, uh, Massey, Stevenson, Fulton, White, Coles, Fayette, and the list goes on and on and on. And I will put a link in the description box for the material that I relied upon in making this video. Now, interestingly enough, it would appear that almost every single sheriff has used the same letter. Uh, it is a form letter, but I think it very uh, eloquently spells out where each and every one of these sheriffs are coming to. I do not know which sheriff was the first one to draft it. Whoever you are, congratulations. It is a well-drafted letter. I want to read that because I think that for all of you in the state of Illinois, you need to understand where your local law enforcement is coming down on the enforcement of your constitutional rights. Because I'm going to tell you right now, your local law enforcement, your sheriffs, they're at least looking out for your Second Amendment rights. Your state government is not doing anything remotely close to that. Now, I'm going to use the letter from Lee County Sheriff Clayton Whelan here, but I just want you to know that essentially every one of these letters written by the sheriffs is essentially in this format. The letter reads, As your sheriff, I wanted to give citizens of Lee County an update on the recent passage of House Bill 5471, also known as Protect Illinois Communities Act. As your duly elected sheriff, my job and my office are sworn, in fact, to protect the citizens of Lee County. This is a job and responsibility that I take with the utmost seriousness. Part of my duties that I accept upon being sworn into office was to protect the rights provided to all of us in the Constitution. One of those enumerated rights is the right of the people to keep and bear arms provided under the Second Amendment. The right to keep and bear arms for defense of life, liberty, and property is regarded as an inalienable right by the people. I, among others, believe that House Bill 5471 is a clear violation of the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution. Therefore, as custodian of the jail and chief law enforcement official for Lee County, that neither myself nor my office will be checking to ensure that lawful gun owners register their weapons with the state, nor will we be arresting or housing law-abiding individuals that have been arrested solely with non-compliance of this act. So as you can see, nearly to a T, every single sheriff in the state of Illinois says, you know what, Governor, uh, I cannot knowingly violate our citizens' constitutional rights. It's against my sworn duty. I will also point out it's against the sworn duty of the governor and every member of your state assembly as well, but I digress. So kudos to the law enforcement officers. Now, what, of course, is the governor's responsible? This governor um, acts with a lot of arrogance. He's very bold. He's very brash. And he basically is saying, hey, listen, I'm just going to find people who can do the job. So I think that Illinois is heading for a big old fashioned fist fight inside the state lines there. I think your governor, your law enforcement, I think your state Supreme Court's going to be getting involved. Ultimately, this is going to end up in litigation. For those of you who want to figure out where this litigation may go, how you may actually reclaim some of your Second Amendment rights down the road, I do encourage you to watch this video right here about the common use test. Listen, in the meantime, time, if you have any questions about what's going on in Illinois or anything related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys know the drill. You can always contact us directly at WashingtonGunLaw.com or you can call us at 425-765-0487. Now, in the meantime, let's remember 
part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Laws, to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.